I applied to the Berlin residency um, in 2013 because I'm not well traveled and it seemed like a perfect opportunity if awarded to me to get to Europe. I had never been to Europe before and Europe had all of this sort of mystical stuff sort of surrounding it for me. I had been to Mexico and several other places in the States, but being from Texas, being from El Paso, um, you know, San Antonio and LA, that was it. Like that, that, those were the vacations that I took as a kid. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up. So we, we camped, you know, we, we did that kind of trip, you know, as a child. So going to Berlin was very exotic to me. And I had every um, stereotype in the book you know, in my pocket when I went there. And all of them, all of them turned out to be false. Like literally all of them turned out to be false. The experience influenced my work in a number of different ways. Um, a lot of which I didn't, I wasn't prepared for initially. I was prepared to do some work that referenced border and border issues. It's something that I've dealt with in my work in the past. And I thought that um, the Berlin Wall would be an ideal sort of format for having a conversation from my particular point of view. So when I got there, I really felt like I, I couldn't go, I couldn't use my old tricks. I couldn't think about um, border issues through the lens that I was used to looking at it. So I tried a number of different ways to think about, um, you know, relics of the military and how that, the, the vestiges of the military in World War II and various occupations of Berlin are still there. Monuments have bullet holes that have not been patched, that literally are still there for everyone to see. I think almost as a reminder of the past, but are um, in a way lessons that are always continually teaching a new generation of people. I fixated on some of the, the relics, the uh, World War II uh, tanks, uh, anti-aircraft guns and things like that that were at various monuments and I thought I'd make some work about them. Um, so that's one part of the work that I made um, while I was at the residency. The second part of the work that I made there was really spawned by the fact that Germans live with their folklore. Their folklore is everywhere. It's in their edifices, it's in their speech, it's um, it's on every fountain. I didn't want to uh, appropriate their cultural um, myths and legends, but I did and was and always have been very interested in oral tradition in my culture. And so I thought I could combine and recombine and remix legends, stories, and in a sense kind of try to use that as a foundation, um, a starting point for a new body of work. The reason why I think that the, the residency, the Berlin residency, is so important at the Kunsthaus Batania is that it provides a haven, a sanctuary for the artist to make work that is completely unique, I think, in this day and age. Um, most people have to hold down a day job. Um, every artist has to typically hold down a day job to do the thing that they do. So when do they make their work? They make it at night. Uh, they make it early in the morning, they make it in between taking their kids to school and what have you. And so this residency provided the artist, uh, provided me with three months of undisturbed uh, attention to my craft. It was fascinating. I mean, it's been a long time since I painted and or carved into a woodblock for four to six hours, you know, took a nap ate some food, carved again for four hours, ate some food, took a nap, <laughs> carved again for four to six hours, went out, stretched, come back, carved again for four to six hours. Time went away, the clock went away, um, and it was complete and utter uh, concentration on what I wanted to do and what I wanted to say. 